Okay, let's start using Autodoc 4. This is based on the tutorial, so I'll use HSG1 and in PDBs that are included in the tutorial files. Let's launch X11 and move to the folders that contain our tutorial files. There they are. Now we run uh, ADT, the Autodoc tools. Okay, so let's open the one H HHG1 PDB. Okay, there it is. As you can see, we can color the atoms in different in different ways, so we can easily more easily visualize some properties. Now there are water molecules in this structure, but it's they're not easy to see in this movie. But well, there they are. And as a next steps, we have to clean them up. So first, we'll select them as residues name. H O H M and asterisk and then we can delete them as an atom set. Okay, there they are, they are gone. We have no longer water molecules and then we can proceed to add the hydrogens. Okay, there they go. Now we will proceed as in the tutorial to open the small molecule. Okay, let's open int pdb. Okay, there it is, with chargers and everything. And we'll have to assign torsion, well, the torsion root and then the rotating uh, bonds. We'll leave 14 of, of from 32. You can see them in green here. Then we'll pick the number of torsions of free torsion. In this case, following the tutorial, we'll choose six and the fewest atoms moved by these angles. We can save uh, our file as PDBQT. This is the small ligand called in PDBQT. Okay, that's it. S next, we'll have to process the molecule the protein so we can pick uh, the residues that will be flexible during docking we select the molecule the uh, the protein molecule and, uh, this asks us about our charges we have previously assigned so we keep them and then we will select the residues that will be flexible in this case arginine a egg eight there they are, you can see them marked by crosses. If we close up, we can see them. There they are. They are no easy to see, but we can make them clear by choosing the torsion angles. This will hide the rest of the protein, but now we can double click the bonds that won't be able to rotate during the dock. We'll deselect the carbon, the alpha carbon and beta carbon so they won't rotate during docking and that will be it. Now we have created flexible residues within our protein for docking. Now we can make appear the rest of the macromolecule of the rest of the protein and save the flexible region of the proteins which will be called H -H HSG flex.pdbqt and then the rigid part which will be called HSG one rigid dot pdbqt okay we have saved both parts okay we have rigid and flexible parts of the, our protein ready for docking and of course the like now we proceed to select which part of the molecule will be used for the grid and we select the rigid part this is very important select the rigid part for the grid. Okay, we have now the wall protein without arginines as a rigid body to create a grid. Now we select a small molecule, int. We also create a grid that it's large enough to contain the side where the ligand will bind. I, I will make it large enough to contain most of the protein. 100 uh, dots per 
100 per 100 a large cube okay that's enough I'll save it next uh, we can we could add a parameter file for autodoc4 but we don't have any right now so let's carry on and let's save the gpf file there it goes it will be called ind.gpf okay the grid part is almost done it, now it's done okay now the docking we now have to indicate the both the rigid part of the protein and the flexible part of the protein which we have previously saved as pdbqt files okay now the ligand that's quite easy is the same I ind ligand we also retain floating maps the search or a genetic algorithm search with 100 runs 300 pop star population and about 2050 energy evaluations okay the docking parameters as usual I, I will add the calculation of the internal electrostatic energy and uh, now the auto coordinates will live alone and we save the DPF file as a Lamarckian genetic algorithm DPF file in this case inda.dpf so we are ready to run autodoc we leave ADT by closing it there it goes in our folder we have now the data for autodoc4 and we'll start by typing auto grid4 give it the parameter file in this case the GPF and typing out our log output log file the ind.glg ind we can use tail the tail command to follow the evolution of the grid creation it will take about two minutes as we can see here and we use the command autodoc autogrid for uh, the parameter file and the log file followed by an percent so we can uh, follow send the process to the background and still following it then when this autogrid process is finished we can launch autodoc for process at the same as we do with autogrid autodoc4 follow the parameter file in this case the dpf file and followed by the log file which will, con which will contain the results that is the ind.dlg file we can see here the, the completion of the autogrid process and now we launch autodoc4 the ind.dpf file and the ind dlg file we send it to the background and again with the tail command we can follow the results so there it's go it's running it will take some hours maybe one or two days to run but in the end we'll have a successful docking run